It's a fact that selling information in the form of video courses is very profitable. There's so much demand for different topics and there's so many problems that need solutions. So perhaps you created your very own video course or you bought private label rights to a video course and you have no idea how to sell it. You also don't have weeks or even months to create a full-blown video sales letter. Maybe you've tried to create a video sales letter and you got stuck and never created a video to sell your video course. Or perhaps the thought of creating a video is daunting and even overwhelming because you don't know where to start. In other words, do you want something fast and easy to create within less than a day? Do you want something powerful enough to get people curious about buying your video course? Maybe you're curious about what your sales funnel is going to look like in order to achieve this goal. Announcing the brand new 10-part step-by-step video course. You'll finally learn how to build video teasers that will help sell your video products. And these methods have been working for the last decade. There's no theory here. Now note, this does not include other products such as software, ebooks, and more. These include only video courses. So here's a quick video's overview of what's inside this video course. Video number one is the introduction. We'll talk about what you need to get started. Video number two, we'll talk about why teaser videos, and we'll briefly explain what the teaser video funnel looks like. Video number three and four are teaser examples where we'll dive into actual examples of how to build curiosity and what that looks like. Video number five, we'll talk about items that you will need to do before you move on to videos number six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And video number six, we'll talk about how to brainstorm your teaser outline, which is crucial to have before you begin to create your teaser video. And then of course, after we brainstorm in video number seven, we'll talk about how to create your teaser outline. And video number eight, we'll talk about video software that you can use to create your videos. And of course, video number nine, we'll talk about how to extract video snippets out of the video course itself. And of course, last but not least, video number 10, we'll talk about how to create your teaser video. Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on how to create teaser videos to sell your video products. This is video number one, of course, and let's go ahead and jump on in. So this is the introduction. And before I want to get started, I want to start with mindset because I want to make sure that you're in the right mindset before we get started. And then we'll talk about the quick overview next and what you need to get started. So I really want you to not assume that this is a sales video course. Yes, in certain respects, we're going to be using the teaser videos to sell our product, but in the next video, you'll see how the funnel is laid out and how teaser videos fit into the piece of the puzzle. So the goal here is to tease and you'll see why this is very powerful in just a minute. It's not necessarily a full blown video sales letter, but we're going to use it to tease, build curiosity and get people interested enough to sign up on your email list. That's the whole goal of this course. Now, the condition, of course, is this process will really only work if the video course is created well. That means there's an introduction, there's step-by-step -step process on solving a specific problem. And you'll see in just a minute what to look out for in the video course. So in other words, we assume that the course creator made a course that solves a problem that you can easily point out. All right, so let's jump ahead to the quick overview. This of course is video number one, which is the introduction. Video number two is why teaser videos. And in that video, I'm going to elaborate what we mean by teaser videos to make sure that you're on the same page. And not only that, you understand where teaser videos fit in your funnel and how they can actually get people onto your email list and how then you can go from there to selling the product. Video number three, we'll talk about teaser examples and this is gonna be a part one and part number two will be video number four. And in these two videos, I'm gonna give you examples of teasers that you can use in your 
teaser video. So that way you can sort of develop a framework of what your teaser video will look like and that will help you later on create a teaser outline. Video number five will talk about the to-do items or the items that you need to accomplish before you move on to the rest of the video course. And video number six will talk about how to brainstorm your teaser outline based upon the things that you learned in the previous video. And of course, video number seven will take the brainstorm, which will be a bunch of ideas, and we'll organize it and then you will have your teaser outline. This is crucial to have before you create the teaser video. So once you've created the essentially the framework, now you can begin the process of creating the video. So believe it or not, creating a video is actually very, very easy. It's about 10 or even 5%, a small percentage of the whole video creation process. The big part is actually getting the idea and creating the outline, if that makes sense. So in video number eight, we're going to talk about video software that you can use. We'll talk about free software and we'll talk about software that costs money, but is well worth it. And of course, video number nine is video course snippets. And essentially what that is, is we are going to look at the video course as a whole and take snippets of the highlights that we can put in our teaser video. And of course, video number 10 is last but not least the creating of your teaser video. So once you got the snippets and once you have the outline, then we can take all the pieces of the puzzle and put them together and organize them based on the outline. That's why the outline is so important because the last videos, video number eight, nine, and 10 are actually very easy. So if you're not technologically savvy and you're concerned about video creation and how that all works, don't worry, that's actually the most easy part. So let's talk about getting started and the tools and what you will need. You'll need a video course that you wanna sell and you'll need to have an end goal. What do you desire that the person will take? And if you don't really know what that is or what that looks like, don't worry about it because we'll talk more about that in the whole video course. And that will become clearer as you watch and go through it. And of course, you'll need to have a video editing software, which as I noted earlier that in video number eight, we'll talk about that. And you'll need some money if you want to take it to the next level and make it professional. So we'll talk briefly about that in video number 10, but that's not necessarily required. So with that said, let's move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. Let's jump on in. This is going to be why teaser videos. So to make sure that we are on the same page, I want to talk about the differences between a teaser video and a full blown sales video, or in other words, a video sales letter. And the reason why I want to do this is simply because it's very easy to confuse the two because the end goal is very similar, which is to get people to buy. But I want to make sure that you understand the differences so that you realize that the teaser video is actually much more easier to create. So let's talk about a video sales letter first. A video sales letter has a lot more of moving pieces. Remember, you got a headline, you got a sub headline, you have the introduction, you, you need social proof, you need testimonials, you need to talk about the product. There's a whole bunch of stuff you need to talk about. So a video sales letter normally takes anywhere from a couple days, a few weeks, or even a month to create. In other words, the major downside is it's going to take a lot of time. And the downside of this is that most people really never get their video sales letter creator, or if they do, it just doesn't really convert. So that's one big problem that we have seen over the last couple of decades. So we really want you to be able to take action really quickly, not get overwhelmed and get something out there. 
So imagine basically taking a full sales letter and putting it into a video. So as you can imagine, creating a full sales letter takes a lot of time and there's a lot more moving pieces. So what I've realized is the biggest reason for failure in the online business industry or anywhere else is not taking action. Now, that's not to say that you did anything wrong. It's just merely to say that it takes longer. So the major goal of this video course is to help you take action without getting overwhelmed and being able to go from A to Z instead of taking maybe a month or a few weeks, rather taking a day or a few hours or even a couple of days. Make sense? So make sure that you don't overthink this process. You simply want to follow me step by step. I've laid out this whole video course in a step by step process. So don't skip around. Don't go to video eight, nine, back to three and all that. Make sure you start with this video and you move to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the rest of the videos. So after time and time again, many people have asked, how do you build an email list? lead magnet or something that you can give away for free in order to get somebody on your list with the ultimate intention of selling a video course. So you got to realize nowadays it's actually very hard to sell something right then and there because most people are skeptical. Most people don't know you, so they're not going to buy right away. So even if you deal with a video sales letter, a lot of times you have to get them on your list. You have to warm them up. You have to build a relationship with them, right? So that's why we are essentially creating teaser videos. You can achieve this process even better by creating a teaser video. You see, like I said, times are changing. More and more people are becoming skeptical, so it's harder to actually sell them. So you would need a full blown video sales letter to do that. But like I said, even that you may not convert everybody, especially if they are cold traffic or cold traffic by what I mean by that is people that don't know you. So that's what you would need to build a teaser video for to have people sign up on your list first, and then you would warm them up via the list to get them to buy. So essentially your funnel should look like this. You should have step one. You should have the teaser video. The goal of the teaser video is to get them interested, get them excited, get them to click, get them to watch really quickly, show the highlights, show essentially a sneak peek of their problem and how you can solve that really, really quick. And it just gets them curious. So that's the most powerful emotion that you want to invoke in step number one. And of course that brings us to step number two, you get them interested enough that they want to sign up on your list to get whatever that you are offering. So in the teaser video, obviously you do want to say, Hey, you'll get something or, um, the something could be the video course. It doesn't necessarily have to be the lead magnet. We've done testing in that realm before in where we get people to sign up just to view the video sales letter. And that works as well. As long as the video sales letter kind of shows or solves whatever problem, that's the point you get people to sign up on your list. And at this moment, they still don't know you and they still need to be warmed up. Right? So that's why in step number three, you build a relationship via the autoresponder email service. So what I mean by that is they sign up on your list and then you email them maybe every day for the next seven to 14 days. And psychologically we have seen that most of the time it takes anywhere from seven to 12 times or seven to 12 emails or days, whatever you want to do in order for the prospect to really warm up to you. And in that time, you just want to give them really good content to bring them from a perspective of they don't know you to, Oh, I really trust you to, Oh, I really trust you enough to want to buy your product. So the teaser video, as you can see, it's, it's not really there to sell. It's selling a little bit in order to get people on the list. 
but it kind of takes away that burden. So a lot of times when you create a full blown video sales letter or even a sales letter, you have this overwhelm and you feel this burden to sell. But with the teaser video, it takes that burden off and it allows you to want to feel motivated enough to get it done and you will be able to get it done at a faster pace as you will see in this course. And of course, step number four is to get them to buy. So after you've built that relationship, they're more likely to buy at that given moment. So of course, in this video course, we are going to primarily focus on step number one, which is creating that particular teaser video, getting them on your email list. All that requires you to do is to get a email autoresponder service. And there are hundreds out there and all you need to do is build a landing page and all that. And that might be a video for a different day, but we really want to hone in on the teaser video because that's step one. And that's the most important part of the piece of the puzzle. And of course of this funnel. So let's discuss what that looks like. So we got a teaser video. The teaser video is going to be much shorter in size. So that's good for you. It's not going to be the full blown video sales letter. That's going to take, you know, a few weeks or even a month to do. It's much faster to create. And the goal here is merely to create curiosity. Now, if you wonder what that looks like, we'll talk about that in the future video. So don't worry about that right now. We're just discussing what a teaser video is. Now, I really want to take a brief moment here and talk briefly about the emotion of curiosity. So that's what kind of envelops the teaser video is curiosity, getting people interested enough to sign up on your email list. Now, why curiosity? Why not other emotions? Curiosity is one of the most powerful emotions that you can invoke, especially if somebody does not know you and you're dealing with cold traffic. If you're dealing with people that already know you, then you might want to just send them directly to the email list or a video sales letter. So the teaser video really is going to talk about kind of the highlights of what you're about to offer and the problems that they face and how you're going to solve that. So this idea comes from movie trailers. If you can think about how movies are sold, it's merely a movie trailer, which is a teaser video. So this idea comes from movie trailers. If you can imagine you're about to go watch a movie, you're really excited about the movie, but you don't know exactly what's in the movie. So you've got a movie trailer. So if you think about that, it's not a full blown video sales letter. Really, it comes down to snippets and highlights and all that that are in the movie that really make it or break it. So sometimes you'll watch a trailer and you'll think, eh, that that doesn't look that great. And you'll judge the movie based on that trailer. So essentially what that is, it, it's very similar to a teaser video. It gets you excited or it gets you angry or it gets you upset or disappointed and you're like, well, I'll just watch it anyways. And you end up finding that the movie is way better than the trailer, or you find out that the movie is horrible and the movie trailer was really the best thing that you saw. But that's really what it comes down to is it's very similar to a movie trailer. And you can also see this in action in the form of short written pay-per-click ads. Believe it or not, uh, pay-per-click ads are a really good example of curiosity because they have to be short. They have to be concise enough to get the click. And that's essentially what you're trying to do is not get the click, but get the click over to get people to sign up on your email list. So getting the email list sign up is essentially the goal. So with the teaser video, the goal is to be short and sweet, but get somebody to sign up on your email list. So what I'm trying to get at today is you don't have to worry about getting the sale when you create a teaser video, because getting the sale is all about warming the prospect up via the autoresponder email service. So that's at a later date. So today 
simply focus on the teaser video, how you can get people curious about buying the video course that you're about to sell. One reason for overwhelm and the burden of not being able to get things done is just thinking about way too many things. And that's why I have broken things up to focus on the teaser video first, and then you focus on selling later. So hopefully that will help you in your journey. So now that you understand what a teaser video is and how that differs from a full blown video sales letter, let's move on to video number three. Hello and welcome back. This is video number three and we're going to talk about teaser examples part number one. So to better understand how you can create your very own teaser videos, we want to take a look at two media forms. So I mentioned briefly how movie trailers and short written pay-per-click ads are great examples of teasers or essentially trying to invoke the emotion of curiosity. Now you might be thinking, well, movie trailers make sense because that has to do with video, but why are we focusing on short written ads? Well, there is a reason for this madness, but any type of video always starts with a written outline. It doesn't matter what video it is. This includes movie trailers, video sales letters, teaser videos, review videos, or any type of video. They always start with an outline. Even this video course started with an outline. So you got to understand the video creation process is actually very, very easy to do. Even if it's a cinematic video, you can always outsource that to somebody who really knows what they're doing, but they're going to need to know the outline. If you think about movies and how they are created, they all need storyboarding. So when movie creators get together, they don't just go ahead and shoot a video, right? They piece together a storyboard and they think, well, this scene would fit better before this scene or this scene would fit better or after this scene, right? So same thing applies in the teaser video. You need to have an outline. And once you have that outline, it's going to be a lot easier to know Okay, what do I put here? What do I put there and all that, right? So that's why having an outline takes away the burden of knowing what to do. And I'll show you later in the future videos when it comes time to creating the videos and extracting the video snippets from the course, how easy that is assuming the video course has been created properly. And properly, I mean that the course has an introduction, some sort of getting started, some highlights, and it's it's good. It's, it's a good course that has maybe some screen capture or screen capture meaning it's showing something in action. So PowerPoint slides like this or presentation or Prezi slides like this are great, but in terms of highlights, you wanna try to show something in action. So if you think about movie trailers, for example, they often show the most highlighted or the action oriented parts of the whole movie. So very, very similar process in that. So as you could imagine, there is going to be homework involved in this video course. It's not about you just watching this course and that's it. We really want you to watch jot down, create your own outline and implement so that you can begin to create your own teaser video to sell the action of getting onto your email list and then warming them up later. So as you can imagine, your future homework in this case will be to create a written outline for your teaser video. It's not going to be right now. It's going to be later on, but we're going to build up onto that. And I really want you to remove the video creation process out of your mind for just a second, because I've noticed that that in itself typically makes people overwhelmed. So we don't want you to be overwhelmed. Just think about the idea of learning how to create an outline right now. That's all I want you to think about right now. So the point here is to look behind the video and look at the goal that you want to achieve and of course how 
you intend to achieve that goal. So let's start with short written ads. And then of course, in the next video, we'll focus on movie trailers. So what I want you to do is go to any news station website and look for what we call avatorials. Now, if you don't necessarily know what they are, they're basically short ads that are disguised as news items, but really the goal of them is to sell a, a different product that has nothing to do with that news item at the end of the day. So the ads themselves are really good because no matter how outrageous they are, they get the click. So sometimes you'll go to these ads and you, they'll say stuff like the, the cure for cancer or something like that. And even though they're outrageous, the whole goal here is just to analyze them enough that you understand how to invoke curiosity. That doesn't mean you have to be unethical and make these outrageous claims. The goal is to understand how they're invoking curiosity and how you can do that in an ethical way yourself. And don't worry, we'll go through the process of creating an outline and all that later down the road. So that is your goal is to get the click and get somebody to sign up on your email list, right? It's not to sell, it's just to get the click and get them to be interested enough to sign up so that you can warm them up and sell them later. So rather than talk about this more, it's gonna be easier if I show it to you in action. So let's head on over to the computer and I'm gonna show you a news station website and other websites where you can find these avatorials to understand how to invoke the powerful emotion of curiosity. Okay, so most of the time you're gonna find these avatorial ads at news sites and they particularly like news sites because they typically blend in as news. So what I want you to do is go to CNN.com or even go to foxnews.com or a big site. So I chose these sites to show you where they're located. Now, what I noticed is when I went to foxnews.com, they weren't on the front page. You kind of have to go to a smaller page. So you have to kind of click through to one of the news items. And typically they're gonna be located at the very bottom. Now, due to FTC rules, they have to say advertisement on them or even sponsored ads. So if you scroll down to the bottom here, you're gonna see stuff like sponsored stories by Outbrain. So Outbrain is one of them. Taboola is another one. That's T-A-B-O-O-L-A. -O -O uh, these are basically sites that showcase avatorials. So if you scroll down, you're gonna see stuff like sponsored stories you may like, ad content by Outbrain. These are avatorials. So you're gonna notice that they purposely make them look like news items because they blend into the news. So the more that you can make them look less salesy essentially, the more you're gonna get the click. So you gotta think about your surroundings. You gotta think about where your teaser videos are gonna be located. And you gotta make them less salesy. So the more they look like either news items or educational or, or something of that nature, the more you're going to get the click, the more you're going to get people to sign up on your email list. So let's take a look at some of them. So we can see here, this one says, Joel's yacht makes the Titanic look like a raft. So you can see that they're short and sweet. You only get one sentence long and they get the click. So it says minutes before wedding, bride grabbed room shaky hand and realizes the truth about him. So even though stuff sounds outrageously crazy, it gets the click. So you might think, well, isn't that kind of clickbaity? Yeah, it can be. But when you click through, you'll notice there's a bigger avatorial, which is a longer ad. It says glasses, wares are going crazy over this website. Uh, it says locate anyone by entering their name. This is addicting. Dell has your ideal precision workstation. This baby elephant decided to spend his 
last days alongside this creature. It's kind of sad, but the point of this is just to see what kind of headline grabs you and then click in. So let's just click one of these. I'm sure this is selling like eyewear. So it says Glasses USA, Herald Weekly, Science Lot, Dell. So you can see who is the advertiser that is selling these items. So let, let's just click one of these, this one here. So this says seven reasons why you should buy glasses online. Interesting. So what's interesting about that is it directed me straight from that ad directly to the website. And then it directs you to somewhat of an educational article. So seven reasons why to buy your glasses online. So obviously from this point over here, if we analyze this, it says glasses wears. It's it's calling out the the person. So if you're a person who wears glasses, this would attract you, right? So when you click that, you're brought over here and you're brought over to an article. So if you think of it, you can either think of these ads as kind of teasers to get people over to your, maybe your opt-in page, your lead magnet of some sort. So maybe you have a teaser video that directs people to a lead magnet and the lead magnet in this case is the seven reasons to buy your glasses online. Or maybe your teaser video is the seven reasons to buy your glasses online. So I want you to go here just to get an idea of how it invokes curiosity. So obviously we don't need to make these outrageous claims, but as you can see, this one here, it shouts out the audience. It says, hey, so-and-so, so-and-so being the audience that you want to grab in. So we can see here. We go down here. It says sponsor stories. So these sponsor stories are ads and you can see the advertiser. So we have LCM health. It's probably some weight loss pill, more disturbing, controversial photos that were recently declassified. How far does 1 million go in retirement? So if I were to click on this, this is the assumption that we grab somebody who is interested in making money during the retirement. And obviously we can see Fisher investments are the people that are selling. So if we click on this, let's see what we get. Remember, we're just analyzing these ads and not necessarily trying to copy them by any means. We're just trying to get an idea of what stands out. So it says Fisher Investments. It's obvious to me that these are ads, but they're directing them directly to their website to an article. So is it time to retire? Your retirement goals needs time. Horizon are important factors in developing an appropriate retirement investment strategy. You can download this lead magnet for free. So this is a good example of having an ad go straight to it looks like an opt-in page. So this is a perfect example. So you could even look through and get examples of how they are selling their lead magnet. So we can see download free. We click on this. And then it looks like we get directed to a opt-in form. So that's interesting. But you see how the ad itself is very crucial. It may not call somebody out, but it definitely attracts a specific type of person who has a specific type of need. So that could be the initial headline that you have or initial intro that you have in your teaser video. So let's jot that down as we're going through here. So. We have the initial headline or sentence. It grabs a specific audience or specific person that the video course, in our case, 
solves. So in this case, we saw the glass glasses wears, and then we saw the people who are interested in retirement. And we noticed that the ad went straight to a, a free report on retirement. And then it went to a opt in form. The glasswares on the other hand went straight to a article on seven ways or seven reasons to buy eyeglasses online. So just by doing this and jotting things down and what stood out to you, you'll start to see some patterns here. So let's take a look at another thing. Let's go to CNN.com. So on CNN.com, I noticed that if you go to the front page and you scroll down, you'll see stuff like advertisement. And we scroll down, you, you start to see stuff like paid partner content. So a lot of times you'll see the, the vendor or the advertiser's name so that you know that it is an ad. Because there's got to be a, a way to differentiate between a real news article and a ad. So if we keep, keep scrolling down, let's see what we get. So we got videos, paid content. All right, paid content. So it says, here's what, in, here's what an online college degree should cost in 2018. 32 rare photos of Woodstock not suitable for history books, unexpected luxury, Columbia senior living apartments. Okay, so let's just click this one. And if you notice, it connects to outbrain.com and then it directs people to this link. And this link is dead. So whoever's running this ad is obviously spending money and doesn't even realize that their website is down. So that's not good for them. So let's go down here. So who knows how much money they're spending to, especially if they're on CNN.com. So it says how to pay your house ASAP. It's so simple. Okay. So game changer. Okay. So if I were to click this, obviously I would be interested in paying my house mortgage off as soon as possible. So let's click on that and see what we get. So why don't banks want homeowners to use this free government program? So essentially what they're doing here is they're, they're calling out a common enemy, which is the banks. They're saying the banks don't want you to know this, uh, but we're here to help you know about this. So essentially what they're coming across as kind of the hero at the end of the day. So it says over 3 million Americans agree that refinancing with HARP saves money and not surprising, blah, blah, blah. When homeowners first visited the lending tree, so we can see that, that, that the product that is being sold is by lending tree. So they're being shown kind of as the savior or the hero in this case. When homeowners first visited lending tree, blah, blah, blah. If you scroll down enough, you'll start to see like, they're going to be promoting their product. So instantly find out if you're eligible. How does this benefit you? Here's how you do it. You click the link, the map below. Once you go through a few questions, you'll have the opportunity to compare the quotes from multiple lenders. Interesting. So they're telling you what to expect ahead of time. And that's part of transparency. So we know that they're being transparent. Your teaser video wants to be transparent, but it's also telling them what to do. So let me jot that down. So we have in this case, mortgage house payment or payoff. And then they're directed to a article on how to find out if you're eligible. And at the end of the article, tells people 
what to expect. And that's good because then you're being transparent and then you're telling people what to expect, what they're going to get and all that. So if you have that as a video and as a teaser, then people know to expect, okay, if I sign up on your email list, I'm going to get X, Y, Z, right? So that's part of transparency. So let's take a look at patterns here. If we take a look at patterns here, we can see that they all start with an ad, but the ad isn't just an ad. The ad is going to ask a question. So it asks a question that only and only the audience that you are targeting understands. So in this case, we need to think of questions that we could potentially ask our audience that only they would understand. Or you can also call them out. So we have an ad. So let's put this here. So step one, you know, we got an ad. So we need to figure out a headline or a hook. And it could be in the form of ask a question or it could be in the form of calling out your prospects in the sense of the glass eyewares, they just said glass wares and they called us out. So step number two, then we have the, either you direct them to an article or in our case, a lead magnet. And maybe on that lead magnet page, you could have something for free, like an article. So we could have an article and then maybe we send them to a free lead magnet. And you really have to ask yourself, are you dealing with super cold traffic, people that don't even know you, or are you dealing with people who semi know you or, or knew you a little bit? If that's the case, then you could essentially skip straight to from the ad to the free lead magnet. The only reason why they have the articles in these cases is because most people that are going from these news websites to the ad, to the article, they have no earthly idea who these people are. But as you can see, it's, it's short and sweet and they're creating the article as sort of a buffer to warm the prospect up. So you can see it's short and sweet, get straight to the point, but it's written sort of a, in a very educational, non-threatening manner. If we went straight from the ad to the opt-in form, then that would be an issue. And that's something you don't want to do. So all I want you to do is kind of go through here and look for patterns, look for what stands out to you because the teaser video is sort of a mix of this and a mix of a movie trailer. It's not this alone and movie trailer alone. It's kind of a combination of the two. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what to look for and what you need to do beforehand to get a better idea of what your potential teaser outline would look like. All right, so that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number five and we're going to talk about a few to do items that you need to accomplish before we move on to the next video. And oftentimes I found that these are the most crucial in helping you figure out what your outline looks like and figure out what snippets of the video course to extract from. So now that you have a general idea of how movie trailers and short written ads work, there's a couple things that you need to do. You see, one of the biggest mistakes that I see people is they don't study up on what they're selling. Yes, that would make sense if you created what you're selling, but if you bought, let's say, private label rights to a video course and you did not watch it, then that would be one of the big mistakes that you don't want to do. So if you're selling a video course, then I would assume that you know what's inside the video course, right? Without knowing what you're selling, it's very hard to create a sales promotion around it. So for those of you who created your video course, great. You can skip this particular process. 
But if you didn't create your video course and you bought rights to it or you have resell rights to it, then you want to make sure to pay close attention. You see, it's very hard to create a teaser video or even a video sales letter or extract the video snippets that would appeal to the buyer if you don't know what's inside the video course. So right now, what I want you to do is pause this video and find the video course that you want to sell and try to spend at least a couple hours to go through it, jot down notes and watch it as a whole. So as you're watching it, I want you to jot down what stands out to you as maybe some aha moments or some highlights, maybe some screen capture video, maybe some PowerPoint slides or presentation slides that stand out to you that you feel that really expresses the video course as a whole. Now, of course, in this example, I'm going to take a video course that I'm familiar with and get what's inside the video course and we'll look at it we'll look at the highlights we'll look at uh, what makes it important and all that so even if you did create a video course this process should help you in terms of doing that so i'm going to look inside a video course that i am familiar with which is called how to make a wordpress site search engine optimized friendly which essentially the premise of that is somebody who wants to get better rankings in Google, they're going to need to make their WordPress site SEO friendly so that the search engines will know what in the world this website is all about. So let's jump over right now to my computer file manager and I'm going to open this course up and we're going to walk through it, analyze it so that you have a better understanding of how to do the same with your video course that you are selling. Okay, so I've got a nine part video course on WordPress on page optimization. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm gonna go ahead and play these so that we can get an idea of what's inside of them. So we've got uh, the first video here. I'm gonna go ahead and play it. Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on on-page SEO for WordPress sites. Of course, this is video number one, which is the introduction. Video number two is going to be the main focus. So we're going to make sure that you have a clear view of what we're going to talk about. Video number three, we're going to talk about five important factors that you definitely should implement in your WordPress site. Video number four, we're going to talk about the URL structure, such as what should your domain look like, what should the URL look like, and all of that. Video number five, we're going to talk about body text structure. Video number six, we're going to talk about image optimization and basically how to make your images more search engine friendly. Video number seven, we're going to talk about title optimization and how long your title should be. Video number eight, we'll talk about metadata optimization and how that can affect what text and what information will show up on the search engines. And of course, last but not least, this is sort of a bonus, but in video number nine, I'm going to talk about the top two WordPress plugins that we highly recommend that you install. Okay, so I'm going to pause this video and the reason why I had you watch the quick overview is that's often the crucial part of understanding what's inside the video course. So we explained video number one was the introduction, number two was the main focus, number three was five important factors. So if we really think about the person who wants to buy this, we need to think that the ultimate reason why they want to buy this course is because they maybe they're not ranking on Google. Maybe their WordPress site is not getting the traffic that they need. So this is kind of usually an afterthought, but this is something that they need to do and they need to accomplish in order to get to that point. So if we think that as point Z and in order to get to point Z, they need to uh, do all of this, right? So we think to ourselves, okay, what are 
important parts of this. So obviously introduction's important, the main focus is important, and if we break things down, we look at, okay, there's five important factors, and then we see one, two, three, four, five. So these are five important factors. So this is kind of a quick overview of this. So if that's the case, we can, we can extract things out of video number three, because video three talks about the five important factors. And basically what you're doing is, is you're teasing them and showing them, okay, this is what you're going to learn. But you don't necessarily need to show, okay, exactly how to do it. So basically the teaser video should show the what's and the why's. What they're going to learn, why it's important. So kind of going back here, we see the what is the main focus. And then the why is what, what are they going to learn right here. So this is probably the why actually, and this is actually the what. And then the how they have to buy the course in order to learn the how. So the what's and the why's. The what's are this. So I would probably extract video snippets out of the five important factors. I would probably show the five important factors. And then you could show snippets of these without actually giving the whole video course. And that would still typically fall under the license of you're not really giving it away for free. You're just extracting little snippets here and there. Or you could, if that's not allowed, you can always recreate it and look at the five important factors and recreate that and take screenshots and put it into your teaser video. So that's another way of doing it. But what we're doing now is we're just trying to get an idea of what we're dealing with. So we got the intro, the main focus, the five important factors, and then we dive into the five important factors, which are one, two, three, four, five, and we show how to implement the five factors. And then the top two WordPress plugins basically speed up the whole process up for these five factors, if that makes sense. So that's basically the premise of the video course. I'm going to go through here. So we got this is video number one. Let's move to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. And in this video, we're going to talk about the main focus so that you have a better clear view of what we're going to talk about in this video course. You see, because on page SEO is such a broad term that literally covers a lot of areas of your website, both the front end, such as the text. Okay. So I'm going to pause the video and tell you that the main focus video is just trying to get people on the same page. So if we move on to the next video here, hello and welcome to video number three. And we're going to talk about the five important factors. Now, this is a quick overview of the five factors. And then of course the next give you a step-by-step -step technique that will help you. This is what happens. And this is, okay, I'm going to pause the video. And as I showed you earlier, those were the five main factors. It was a quick overview of the other factors. And let's just take a quick look at the other factors to see if we can find any kind of golden nuggets that stand out to us. Okay, welcome back. This is video number four, and we're going to talk about the URL structure. Now Google has become much, that could be anything depending on, click on OK, click update, and that's it. Okay, so typically with at least this video course, a lot of times you'll have kind of an introduction and then you'll have screen share. Screen share is typically what you want to place in your teaser video because it shows people that this is not going to be just a, a presentation video or a PowerPoint or a Prezi video that simply talks about what you need to do. It actually shows you what you need to do. And that in itself is very important. So we can see that that's good. Let's move on to video number four. And let me quickly resize this a bit so you can see what I'm doing here. But I've got Windows Media Player open. I'm just going to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number four. And Google sees that. That's not a good sign. In fact, if they go to Google Freelancers or... Okay, so we can see that video number five has screen capture as well. And that's good because we can also extract that as well. But since I know this course really well, I will say that the next few videos have screen capture video. 
and that's good. And that's what you're looking for. If the video course doesn't have any screen capture video, then that can be somewhat of an issue, especially if you're showing people how to do something. Some co video courses don't have screen capture because they're more fundamental, but if it's a video course that needs to show how to do something like how to set up your social media or how to do that or how to do this, then it's important to show people how to do something, right? So for example, the, the trailers that we looked at earlier, a lot of them were showing people how to do them visually. And that's important, especially when you're trying to tease and trying to build curiosity essentially. So that's basically what you need to do is go through the whole video course, get an idea of what kind of snippets you can extract, what kind of highlights, what things stand out to you and all that. And then based on that, you can grab that information later and I'll show you how to grab the video snippets and all that later down the road. But for now it's some mainly the purpose of this video is simply to get an idea of what the video course is about, the highlights and all of that. All right. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number six and this video is going to talk about how to brainstorm your teaser outline. So now that you know what you're selling and you have a good idea of how to create curiosity based on the examples previously, let's brainstorm the teaser outline for your video. Now, before I get started, I want to say that do not organize the outline in any way. If your brain says, let's organize this, don't do it. What we're doing is we're doing a creative process. And the idea is to just jot down ideas on a piece of paper or on your computer. The process of reorganizing that will be in the next video. And the reason why I say that is because the moment you think creatively and you jot down ideas and you begin to get into this process of trying to reorganize, what happens is your logical brain will come in and it'll shut you down and your creative mind will not be able to think as clearly. That's why don't worry about the order right now. Just think about the ideas. All right. So step number one is based on the video course that you are selling. I want to ask you these questions and I want you to jot them down on a piece of paper or your iPhone or, or whatever digital advice, note taking advice that you're taking. So what are the reasons why somebody would want the video course? Write that down. Or in other words, what are the problems that they are facing? Based on the previous example, the reason why somebody would want to make their WordPress site search engine friendly in the first place is the ultimate desire that they want better search engine rankings. Most people don't make their WordPress site SEO friendly just to do it. They do it kind of as a pain and a solution to their pain that they want better rankings. So in other words, the pain that they face is not ranking well in the search engines, not getting free traffic to their website from Google or even Yahoo or Bing or other search engines. So I want you to pause this video right now and jot down the ultimate desire. What does that look like in terms of the video course that you are selling right now? Okay. So hopefully you have that written down. Step number two is what is the roadblock that is preventing them from reaching the ultimate desire? So you wrote down the desire, but what is preventing them from reaching that? Is it a, like a technical roadblock? Is it a psychological roadblock? Is it a physical roadblock? So in our case with the video course, with the WordPress site, remember that in that case, being able to make the WordPress site search engine friendly is merely a technical roadblock. They truly desire better ranking, but they can't do that until they get this technical issue done. So pause the video and write that down in relation to what you're selling. In step number three, what type of person would fit this? Now, in our case, the type of person that would fit this typically would be somebody who is not technical savvy. 
or if they are technical savvy, they may not understand the formula or the process of what it entails to set up and to make a WordPress site search engine friendly. So they could either be a newbie, write that down, or they could be an expert who doesn't know the formula. So write that down. Is it a newbie? Is it a layman? Is it an expert? Is it an advanced person or an intermediate type person? Uh, what kind of knowledge would they have? And write that down. So it could be different people, like I said, newbies and experts and different reasons why there is a roadblock. But by understanding the different types of people that you could be targeting, the better you will understand what you need to convey essentially in your trailer itself. So pause the video, write that down, and then move on to step number four, which is what are videos that are part of the video course that fit the above? So if I refer back to the WordPress search engine video course, I can think, well, what parts of the video course make it so that a newbie feels comfortable or an expert feels comfortable? Well, if we think about it, the five factors video would be important. And then maybe pieces of the screen capture video for how to do it. Because a newbie is going to think, I don't know how to do it. Is it going to be step by step and easy enough? So screen capture video in that case would be crucial for a newbie. An expert, usually they can figure it out themselves, but, and they would want to know the formula, which would be the five factors, and they probably could figure it out themselves. But the newbie themselves is definitely, they're definitely going to need screen capture video. So pause the video, write that down. Step number five is going to be what are key elements that you jotted earlier during the previous videos that you felt were important to have in your movie trailer or teaser video. So what key elements you jotted down earlier during the previous videos that you felt were important. So pause the video, go ahead, write these answers to all these questions down right now. I already gave you a few for the example video course that we're looking at, and you can use that for yours, but obviously it's going to be a little bit different because you're going to be selling a different video course. All right. So go ahead and do that now and we'll see you in the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number seven. We are now going to take all the ideas that you brainstormed in the previous video. And now we are going to reorganize them into a sequential step-by-step -step outline. So essentially, if you think about how movies are created, and like I said, it was usually a storyboard, and then you figure out what scene should go before what scene, that's this purpose of this video. So let me show you how it works right now. Okay, so referring back to the notes that we took during the short written ad, I'm gonna scroll down here, and I went ahead and wrote out an outline that you can follow. So we have the attention, which is kind of the calling out of the audience, sort of like the short written ad where you call out the audience. So if we refer, refer back to it, we remember that there was a eyeglass where ad, which called out the audience. And there was also a retirement ad, which didn't necessarily called out the audience, but called out a question that the audience would gravitate towards. So, in this case, we have attention colon audience as our first. And then we have something like imagine being able to do this or do that. So retirement wise, imagine being able to live carefree with your family without having to worry about income or something. But the problem is blank and that's the roadblock, right? So now you're beginning to see all the things that we talked about briefly kind of come into play. And then we have the quick overview of the solution after we introduce the solution. And then of course, after that, we have the what's and the why's in sort of an educational manner. And then of course we have 
number seven, which is the snippets of the highlights, and then of course the call to action. So what I would recommend that you do is just pause this video and jot this outline down. You can follow this outline, you can kind of play around with it, you can tweak it however you wish, but the goal here is definitely you want this, you want this, and you can kind of sprinkle benefits around this area here. You can also sprinkle highlights around as well after you introduce the solution. But this is kind of the format that we use. So let's take, for example, the WordPress SEO video course. So let's think about the audience. Well, in this case, the audience, like we mentioned earlier, would be potentially somebody who is frustrated, who has an online website and their website just isn't getting the traffic that they need. So they could be online businesses, people with websites, which are most likely online businesses. And if they, let's say newbies, and the newbies, the roadblocks is that they have technical difficulties. And then we have maybe intermediate people, or let's say tech savvy people, but they just don't know the formula of how to set up a WordPress SEO site. But that would be the same for a newbie. So what we found is as long as you're talking directly to the audience that is a newbie, typically starting with the basics, then eventually you will be talking directly to the tech savvy people as well. So we're gonna do newbies in online businesses, people with websites. And what is the benefit of this course? The benefit is to be able to rank on Google and Yahoo to get free search engine optimized traffic. The problem is the technology, which is typical. And most video courses solve that simply by showing people how to do X, Y, and Z. So the problem is technology, in this case, how to make a WordPress site SEO friendly. So in other words, they aren't sure, not sure about what to do, what formula to use, what plugins to use. And the solution, of course, is going to be the video course that you're selling. So in this case, it is the video course on how to make any WordPress site SEO friendly. There's no discrimination towards any website. So we can say any WordPress website. Because that's something that somebody would probably ask is, well, does my site work with this video course? So we want to make sure that we emphasize that here. And then of course the quick overview of the solution. This is a, I forgot how many parts it was. I think it was nine. Let me just check real quick. So it's a nine part video course. And then we need a video snippet for this. So as you're writing your outline, think of areas that you could have extract the video snippets. So in this case, we could extract the video snippet of the five factor video. Then of course we have the what's and the why's in an educational manner. So in this case, what is important about having a, S a WordPress site that is SEO friendly So most likely this information will be in the, either the introduction or typically will be in the first video or the second video for the snippet. And of course, number seven snippets of highlights, that's easy. 
you're looking for kind of screen capture video or screen share video. And when I'm referring to this, I'm referring to you're actually looking at a mouse move around on the screen and all that. Of course, this makes it difficult if the video course is just purely PowerPoint and that's it. But sometimes video courses, if they're teaching the basic fundamentals, then it doesn't really make sense to have screen share. But if it's showing how to do something, then it's necessary to have screen share. So in this case, to show the snippets of the highlights of the how, remember we have the five factor video that talks about the five different SEO factors. And then of course, following that video, I believe, can't remember, let's see here, videos four, five, six, seven, and eight. So four through eight, videos four through eight. And then I believe it's the part two or the second half of each of the video is where it's located. So as we're writing down the outline, we're also brainstorming and getting an idea of the location of the snippets. And of course we have the call to action and the call to action, depending on what that is, it could be either getting access to buying the video course, or it could be something additional of value where you could produce a report, maybe a free report or free article with some tips that maybe elaborate further on those five factors. Or maybe you take one of those factors and you elaborate and hire a article writer to write something that is helpful based on one of those factors. And you can do that. Now, just to give you some ideas, since the goal is to get people to sign up on your email list, once they're on your email list, you could have something like a seven to 12 day autoresponder series. And maybe day one and two is maybe the welcome. And then of course, day three, four, five, six, seven could be an introduction. Well, let's say welcome on day one. And then day two could be the what's and the why's. And then day three, four, five, six, those are five. So actually we could have like five factor email and then of course, day three, four, five, six, seven, eight could be the how snippets. So what I'm showing here is you're going to make a video for the one here, the outline here, but the email list is actually separate. All this, this is nothing to do with videos or anything like this is these are emails, but I'm just showing you that you can simply also take the outline that you've written and literally turn that into email text and turn that into your autoresponder series. So that's a great idea on how to essentially rehash what you've already created. So that way you don't have to recreate a lot of things from scratch. All right. So just giving you some extra kind of bonus ideas right here. So now that we have the outline for this here, which is from this point, to this point, we can move on to the next remaining videos. Hello and welcome back. This is video number eight and we are now going to talk about video software. So now that you understand the most important process of creating a teaser outline, which were videos one through seven, believe it or not, the technical aspect of video creation is actually about 10% or even, even sometimes 5% of the whole process. So it's a very minute process. And once you understand the technical understanding of how to extract the video snippets and how to reorganize them based on the outline, you're going to see how easy it, it really is. So let me start by showing you some video creation software that you can use and what we will be using. Okay, so there are two softwares that I would recommend that you use. Number one, if you don't want to spend any money and you're, you don't plan on doing a lot of video editing in the future with video courses or you don't plan on creating lots of teaser videos, then there's a software called HitFilm 
Express. It is free and it's fairly easy to use the program to edit videos. Now, that said, I do feel like uh, the one that is the best of them all in terms of editing videos and extracting snippets and all of that is Camtasia. We've used this for decades and this piece of software has come very, very convenient in terms of uh, just editing videos, creating videos and all that. So if you foresee yourself using this to create additional snippets or additional pieces of your teaser video, then I would highly recommend Camtasia because this is actually what I'm using right now to create this video course. So Camtasia does come with a price and if you click on price, you'll see that it, it does come with a price about $249, but it is well worth it in the long run. It, it's definitely a good business expense when it comes to creating videos from scratch and editing videos because what's nice about it is you can record what is going on on the screen. So one thing is if you want to add on to the video course, you could by getting Camtasia and adding additional value to the video course or to the teaser video. Now Camtasia, what's nice about it is we will be using that in this video course and I'll show you some tips and secrets and techniques that you can use with Camtasia that you could not otherwise use with other video apps. Hello and welcome to video number nine. We're going to talk about video course snippets. So by now you should have the video course files in hand, which should be coming in the form of either AVI files or MP4 files. And you should have an, a good idea of what videos you will need to extract. This process is going to be very easy, assuming that you have already watched the video course as a whole and you have an idea of what the highlights are. However, if you have not, this is going to be very difficult for you. So if you haven't watched the video course, make sure that you watch the video course. So now if you want to learn how to extract the video snippets first and then go back and do that later, then that's fine as well. So let's hop on over to our video creation software. In this case, we'll be using Camtasia and I'll show you how it works and how to extract snippets out of the video course. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be using Camtasia because that is one of the best editors in terms of editing video courses. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you to locate the MP4 files over here. We're going to highlight these and then we're going to drag them and then we're going to drop them into the import media bin section. So as you can see, drag and drop it in here. And you might have to wait a few seconds. Don't click anything, otherwise it'll lock up. And there we go. So we have videos one through nine in here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to extract certain pieces of the video so that we can create our teaser video. So as long as you don't give away the full video, that should be fine. Of course, you can always check with the video creator to make sure that that is okay, but typically it should be okay as long as you don't give it away. So what we're doing is we're just grabbing little bitty snippets to essentially sell the video course. So let's look, let's look for number one. This is number one. We're going to left click. So if you're using a Mac, if you're going to be using a PC and you have the updated Camtasia version, they both should look the same. If you have an older version of Camtasia, it should look slightly different, but you're going to see and you're going to notice that it's pretty much the same. You're going to have this track down here, which basically allows you to drag and drop elements down here like so. So we can see this is the first video. 
So if we refer back to our outline, if we go back over to here. So we're focusing primarily on newbies. And in this area, we are most likely going to need to, we're not going to say, hey, newbies. We're going to say, do you have a website? And if you do, then is your website getting traffic? So we're not even going to talk about WordPress SEO first, right? People don't really care about SEO or WordPress SEO or the technology. What they care about is the end desire or the end result. This is mainly just here as a means to get past the roadblock, if that makes sense. So we don't even need to introduce this information until later down the road. So if we, if you can go through the video course and you find a section that talks about the benefits and the ultimate desire, then great, extract that out of there. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how to extract snippets from a whole video. So let's say we go through here. And we decide. Let's see. Something like this, something in the introduction, maybe something here where it says, don't get caught up in all the SEO changes as that will keep you from moving forward. So let's say that we decide that, okay, th this sounds nice. And then let's just grab this out of here to get the snippet. What you can do is you can do it several ways, but I'm going to show you the fastest way. You could either highlight it and then right click and then produce the timeline selection as a video and basically totally render and extract the video. So what that means is you're extracting that portion and you're saving it as a file on your external online file manager. Or another way to do this is simply, let's say you want to start here and you don't want anything before that. So if you want that, then you can put this here. You want to split the track. So we're going to hit this split, or you can click on S one of the two. So I'm going to do that. We split the track and then I'm going to delete what's before it. And let's say that I want everything from this point just to this point right so if that's the case i split the track and then i move it over so that's the fastest way to essentially split or extract the video segments so congratulations you reached the end of this video course this is of course video number 10 and we're going to take all the things that we did in the previous videos and take all the video snippets that you now have in hand and simply reorganize them based on the sequential teaser outline that we created in the previous videos now if you don't have these snippets that fit a certain area of your outline then that's totally fine, but you will need, of course, to create them yourself or hire a voiceover artist to do them for you. Now, I will say it's most likely easier to create them yourselves. And sometimes you, you could even remove the audio and just place a soundtrack on top of them. So even if the video creator has a different voice than you, it doesn't matter. Or you can totally remove it and add your own voice and do that. So I'm going to show you different ways of doing that in this particular video. Another thing you can do is if you hire a voiceover artist, you can simply give them the text script, have them do the audio, and then place some video on top of that as well. All right. So let me show you how all of this works. And of course we decide this one here, we're going to create ourselves, but this one here, is there so the problem is technology how to create or how to make a wordpress site seo friendly not sure about what to do what formula to use what plugins to use blah 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 so let's say that piece was this and we need to create these and then introducing the solution so 
usually the solution hasn't been created so you need to create that yourself so sometimes you can simply click on the plus sign or you can use annotations as well so what we're gonna do is usually in the beginning that's the case but if that's not then you can always import like images and stuff so let's see Let's say for example that we do have the image created. So what we could do is we could click on media. And what we want to do is we want to go back up here, import media. And we want to find some images. And I've got a background here. So let's say we'll move that down here. And if you put your mouse over here, you'll notice you can drag this and extend the time. So we can see that it moves from here over to here and we can always move this as well, like that. So we could even move like that. So we have a background. And of course we could add some sort of call out on top of that. So we've got different behaviors. We have annotations and call outs. So let's say we're going to add a call out here. And instead of white, we're going to make that black. Like that. One thing I found with teaser videos is ask people questions. So how can you make your WordPress site SEO friendly? And of course, we could extend that. Let's see, we'll put it there. And of course, if you, what I did just now is I clicked copy and then I right clicked and clicked on paste. And that gives you the ability to add more text. So, what you can do here is add more text. So, how can you make your site SEO friendly? You can say by implementing five factors. And let's say we're going to put that there. And then let's go back to our media and talk about the five factors. So if we go back to the outline here, let's say we, we've done that. So we'll mark this red. Or we'll, we'll actually gray this out. And then, of course, the quick overview of the solution and then the five factor video. So the five factor, let's see here. That's video number three. So what I'm going to do here, push video number three over here. And then I'm going to look for the part where I talk about the five factors. And Let's see, we've got a, that's why you need to watch the video course and figure out, okay, where does it actually talk about the five factors without giving too much away? One thing you want to make sure of is when you create teaser videos is not to give too much away. Because if you can give too much away, then somebody else will just go to Google and, and figure it out themselves. But you want to talk about the what's and the why's, meaning what are the five important factors and why are they important? And sometimes you may not get that information in the video course. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad course. It just means the outline that you want to create may be a little bit different. And if that's the case, that's fine. You can always tweak it and do what I'm doing here. So let's say, for example, that the snippet that we want starts from here and then it ends in here. So if that's the case, we want to put the marker here. We want to split it. And of course, delete everything to the left of it. And let's say that it ends right here. We'll split. And then we'll move that right here. All right. And then we move on to the next item, which is the introduction or second part video. The second video. So what, what's important? Why is it important? So that would be video number two. So let's look for number two. This one here. Okay, so let's say, okay, this, this part here is important. We want to extract this part from the left of it, and we want to stop here. 
going to split that and then we want this part. So we're going to move that over here and we refer back over here and then we think, okay, now let's show some highlights of the actual course. So four to eight, so four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's look here. So we got, so where's four? Four's here. And remember with the highlights, we want to look for some screen share. So let's go straight here and let's say, okay, we don't want to give too much screen share away because that will show somebody exactly what to do. But we'll say that, okay, this gives a little bit of information, but it doesn't give too much away. So we're going to split that here. And then I'm going to copy this. I'm going to right click, copy, I'm going to move over here. And then we're going to paste. And the reason why I'm doing this is you'll see in a minute. Here's some highlights or not highlights, but here's some sneak peek previews of the course. So now we can grab this, we can move it over here and then we can show the highlights here. So we go from here over to here. So we do the same thing for the rest of the five, six, seven, and eight. We extract those highlights and we add them here. So let's see here. Let's just do one for number seven. And we'll say, okay, this is, you know, a piece. Let's grab a piece out of here. Now, obviously, as I grab the piece, I don't want you to grab just random pieces, but grab pieces that you think would actually add value kind of deal. Now, one way of doing this is you can also remove the actual audio. So if you were to remove the audio and you were to add a soundtrack to it, you all you need to do is simply click on the video, right click, and then you can edit audio or you can separate audio and video. If you do that, then you can delete the audio track do the same thing here. Of course, you could edit the audio and delete that as well, but either way is fine. And then what you could do is add a soundtrack and then it makes it feel like you're viewing one cohesive unit kind of deal. And you can also voice over it as well. Okay. So once that's done, we can add a call to action right here. Want more or, or want a free report on five ways to make your site SEO friendly in two hours? Sign up below. So you always want to have a call to action at the end of a teaser video. So once that's done, you can spice it up by going to a site called videos and, or you can hire an After Effects developer, but videos is probably better, but you can go to V I D D Y O Z E.com and this is a program that you can use and you don't even have to be a After Effects editor and you can create some fancy introductions and outros and then you can add them to the beginning, the ending, the middle section of your video to make it look more professional. And while you're at it, you can also add transitions. So let me show you that real quick. So if you go to transitions, you can add, basically transitions are elements that are between each of these snippets or sections of the media that allow you to transition from one element to another. So right now, let's say we go from here to here, we click play. You'll see that it jumps from the orange to the red without any sort of transition. 
But if we add a transition, it makes it look a little bit nicer. So we can say fade through black here. So now take a look as we go from here to here. So you can see there's a nicer transition. We can also make the transition longer by extending the arrows like so. Like that. But you don't want to make it too long, otherwise it can get boring and slow. You can also add other transitions as well. But what I've noticed is that typically you want to stick with just like fade or fade. The other ones look kind of cheesy if you think about it. So if you do like flip, it's okay. But it, in, a, in a certain way, it looks kind of old school. So really up to you and really up to what your audience likes, but that's how you do it. And then of course, if you want to add a soundtrack, then you can always import media into here and simply drag the soundtrack to another additional track. So if you click this little plus sign here, it adds tracks and you can add a soundtrack on top of here. So let's say for example, give you an example here. So this right here, we got the audio and the video. So let's say, for example, we import a soundtrack. It's going to look like this, something like this. So we're going to move it on top on track number three. And of course, if it's not long enough, you want to make sure that the soundtrack is long enough. But what you could do is if the soundtrack is too short, you can always loop it around. And the way you loop it around is by simply copy and paste and then putting a duplicate right here. One thing I will say is whenever you create a video and you have a soundtrack, it's highly recommend that, that the soundtrack is not too loud. So make sure when you listen to the soundtrack that if you do have voice, that it's not too loud. If you don't have voice, then still make sure that the soundtrack is not too loud. Otherwise, sometimes it will take away from the actual trailer itself. Of course, movie trailers can kind of get away with it because it's a lot of times action oriented. But I hope you enjoyed seeing how to piece together your video course. Mm -hmm.